Welcome to the safety orientation training. This orientation should take approximately 30 minutes to complete. The purpose of this course is to provide information on general safety rules that allow team members to reduce workplace incidents and hazards. Quiet Flex, like other facilities, enforces safety rules and best practices. It is important that you are aware of the safety rules to avoid injuring yourself or others. We value the safety of every team member, and take great efforts to ensure everyone is properly informed of the hazards they may encounter on the job. Before operating any equipment, always inspect the equipment for any abnormalities. If you find any abnormality before, or while operating the machinery, report it to your supervisor. Continuing to work when unsafe conditions are present, can lead to unnecessary, serious, or severe injuries to yourself and others. When you observe an unsafe situation, follow this sequence of steps. 1. Stop. Stop what you are doing, and press the emergency stop. 2. Call. Immediately call your supervisor or manager to notify them of the issues or concerns you are experiencing with your machinery. The third step is. Wait. Wait for your supervisor to inspect the unsafe conditions, and take necessary corrective actions. Continue working, only after safe working conditions are met. Core safety rules apply to all departments, no matter what job is being performed. The core safety rules only cover general safety knowledge. Rule 1. Wear personal protective equipment, or PPE, where required. Rule 2. At every intersection, team members who are walking or driving a vehicle must stop, look, and point in the direction of travel prior to moving forward. Rule 3. If a team member believes they are in a dangerous situation, they must immediately leave the area of perceived danger and contact a supervisor to report the situation. Rule 4. Removing Bypassing or modifying a machine guard or safety device is prohibited. Do not use a machine if the guard or safety device has been removed or compromised. Rule 5. Lockout, tag out procedures must be followed. No team member is to use equipment that has been locked or tagged out by another team member. Equipment that has been tagged can only be restarted by authorized personnel. Rule 6. Team members must not operate any equipment without proper training. If you are unfamiliar with a machine, you must ask for guidance before starting the machine. No team member will be disciplined for refusing to operate unsafe equipment or machinery on which they have not been trained on. Rule 7. All unsafe acts. Equipment malfunctions. Forklift slash tugger incidents. Property damage. And. Safety issues must be reported immediately to a supervisor. Work-related injuries and illnesses must be reported as soon as discovered. No team member will be disciplined for reporting an injury or illness. Rule 8. The operation of any powered, industrial equipment must include authorization, training, and approval prior to use. Operators must comply with all safety standards established for the equipment, which includes but is not limited to operation of a forklift, tow motor, crane, and any other electrical equipment. Rule 9. You are responsible for taking care of your personal work environment. Good housekeeping includes the daily removal of trash, the immediate cleaning of spills, and maintaining clean floors. Rule 10. All team members and associates are required to enforce the company's safety rules. Failure to comply will result in progressive disciplinary action. All equipment and machinery are designed for safe operation as long as all the safety requirements are met. Each piece of equipment has a specific safe operating procedure that must be followed. Familiarize yourself with the equipment operation rules before operating equipment or machinery. Rule 1 Before operating any equipment, always inspect the equipment to ensure that it is safe to use. Any unsafe conditions should be immediately reported to your supervisor. Working when unsafe conditions are present can lead to unnecessary injuries to yourself 
and to others. When you observe unsafe conditions, use the stop, call, wait process. This process consists of 1. Stop what you are doing, and press the emergency stop button if it is safe to do so. 2. Call your supervisor, lead, or manager to notify them of the issue or concerns you are experiencing with your machinery. N. 3. Wait while your supervisor inspects the unsafe conditions and takes necessary corrective actions to ensure safe working conditions. The stop, call, wait process should also be followed when you reasonably believe a task to be unsafe. Rule 2. Do not attempt to clean, operate, or repair machines unless trained and authorized by the company. Rule 3. Keep your hands and clothing away from all operating areas to avoid being caught by the machine or injured. Rule 4. When working around pieces of rotating equipment, wearing gloves can increase the chance of the operator being pulled into the machine, resulting in limb amputation or death. Rule 5. Machine operators must not wear watches or jewelry while operating machines. Jewelry can get caught in power tools, conveyors, and moving parts of machinery. Wearing jewelry can also result in electric shock. In addition, all long hair must be pulled back to avoid becoming caught by equipment. Rule 6 All equipment have emergency stops, also known as e stops. Ensure that you are familiar with the location of the emergency stop for your equipment. If you are not sure, ask your supervisor. Rule 7 Never leave a running machine unattended. Always turn off a machine before leaving your station. Never bypass safety locks, remove, or tamper with machine guarding. Moving machine parts have caused severe workplace injuries like crushed fingers or hands, amputations, burns, blindness, and fatalities. Machine guards are engineered to protect workers from becoming injured. For example, the guard pictured here covers a moving power assembly. When it is removed, you can see a flywheel that is used to pull enormous weight with its energy coming from a powerful motor. When this machine is operating, it poses a dangerous hazard without a guard in place. If a piece of your clothing got caught up in the moving wheel, it would pull your entire body in and cause severe, and in many cases, fatal injuries. Machine guards also reduce the hazards from sparks or broken machinery. Accidental contact is a major risk during the operation of a machine. Working around any moving machinery has potential hazards. Know the hazards and control them before and during operation. Insulation is used for the external insulation of heating and air conditioning units in commercial and residential systems. Insulation contains fiberglass that can cause skin irritation. If exposed to fiberglass, to avoid irritation, you should immediately use the barrier creams located at the facility. We care about the health and well-being of all of our people. If you are hurt or injured on the job, you must immediately inform your supervisor. You will be escorted by your supervisor to the first aid room. If the injury is an emergency that requires outside medical attention, report back to the medical office or your supervisor as soon as you are released. Incidents that need to be reported during the aches, pains, scrapes, and your misses end of shift tag up include unsafe acts or conditions, near miss incidents, and injuries. In addition, concerns that are related to safety, quality, and or equipment such as property damage, fires, and spills, personal appearance, proper hygiene, and appropriate attire are important to the work environment. Team members are expected to report to work wearing clothing appropriate to their position. Appropriate and inappropriate attire includes shirts. It is mandatory that shirts must have sleeves. Cut off shirts are not allowed. Bottoms. Full length pants are required. Shorts or capri pants are not allowed. Shoes. Steel toed shoes are mandatory on the manufacturing floor. Flip flops or any other footwear that exposes your toes or top part of your feet are not allowed on the manufacturing floor. Glasses. Clear safety glasses with an ANSI rating of C87 are required.
In addition to the ANSI rating of Z87, prescribed safety glasses must include side shields. Tinted glasses are not authorized. Hair. Long hair must be pulled back to prevent being caught in equipment. Identification. Team member ID badges must be worn and visible at all times. For team members at Quiet Flex, the right tool for the job often calls for a box cutter. A box cutter is a cutting tool that is designated to cut and open objects and typically consists of a retractable blade. Box cutter blades are sharp and can cause cuts or punctures to your hands if used improperly. To prevent injuries while using a box cutter, consider the following. Ensure you are using authorized box cutters and blades. Do not bring box cutters, blades, or knives from home. Use what is provided by the company. Only use self-retracting box cutters, which allow the blade to hide. The blade must be rounded off. No pointed edge blades are allowed. Properly store your box cutter when it is not being used. Always cut away from your body. And wear appropriate PPE. Dyneema gloves and Kevlar sleeves are resistant to cuts and mandatory when using any authorized blade. If you are not sure if your blade is authorized, practice stop, call, wait, and verify with your supervisor. All duct operator and bagger stations have their own emergency stop button. Prior to climbing onto the table, you must ensure the e-stop button is engaged. If the puller, N, or pushers are still in motion after pressing the e-stop, inform your supervisor immediately. Do not climb on the table. It is important that you become familiar with the e-stops on your line. Always use the step provided on each side of the table when getting on and off the table. N, Use caution near the table gap on the double-sided compression tables. While on the manufacturing floor, pedestrians need to follow extreme caution because there is always a lot of foot and motor traffic. When crossing an intersection, always follow, stop, look, point. The following video demonstrates proper stop, look, and point techniques. There are additional safety concerns when walking on the manufacturing floor. 1. Always remain in the designated pedestrian walkways. The lines are meant as a guide to keep you in the safe zone. 2. Listen and look for horn sounds, warning lights, and backup alarms. 3. Do not approach a forklift until the operator indicates that it is safe to do so. Maintain at least a 36-inch clearance from operators. Remember, forklift steer from the rear. 4. Forklift drivers are required to stop at every intersection. 5. Never ride on a forklift, be lifted by a forklift, or act carelessly around or near a forklift. 6. Pedestrians always have the right-of-way. 7. When a blue light is visible, stop. Forklift's bright blue light on the floor is clearly visible to pedestrians and vehicles, alerting them of a nearby presence of the forklift. When you are lifting heavy objects or doing strenuous physical labor on a daily basis, follow proper lifting techniques to avoid possible back injuries. Back safety in the workplace is very important. The following video demonstrates proper techniques to avoid back injury when lifting heavy objects. Now let's look at the correct way to lift an item from a pallet. First, move your feet as close as possible to the edge of the pallet. Don't bend over from further away to save time. Slowly lift with the power coming from your legs, raising the load close to your body. Keep your elbows in and try to keep your spine in its normal position. 
tighten your stomach muscles and lift smoothly without jerking. Turn your feet to rotate, not your back. Twisting puts a lot of pressure on the soft tissues of your spine. When you set down or lift a load, most of the power should come from your legs. Use the lateral lunge when reaching to the back part of a low pick slot. Your feet should be wider than shoulder width and your hips should be centered over the lead leg. For items at or above shoulder height, hold the item closely, putting one foot slightly forward. Use a rocking motion to move the item, like so. Slowly shift the weight from your back foot to your front foot, and then push the item onto the pallet. Pre-shift stretching and warm-up exercises Reduce the risk of injury by decreasing fatigue and improving muscular balance, posture, and muscle coordination. Pre-stretches are required by all departments prior to the beginning of a shift. During pre-shift stretches, the supervisors lead team members through exercises. If you happen to miss your department group stretch, it is important that you stretch on your own. Working on the manufacturing floor, you are exposed to particulates that may get in your eyes. To minimize the possibility of injuring your eyes, never rub your eyes, even if you think it is just a dust. Always, use the eye wash station. An eye wash station, is a device that can protect against chemicals, or substance, related eye injuries. To use the emergency eye wash station. Push the lever forward. Immediately flush eyes, for at least 15 minutes. And, keep the eyes open and rotate the eyeballs in all directions, to remove contamination from around the eyes. An injured person, may need help holding the eyelids open. Let's watch, a video on emergency eye wash. Where are your eye wash stations? When will you need them? Dirt, dust, or chemicals can be stirred up in the air and get blown into your eyes. Chemicals or other materials can be splashed onto your face and into your eyes. Anything on your hands or gloves, particles, chemicals, or other materials can get rubbed into your eyes. If something like a corrosive chemical gets into your eyes, the first few moments are the most critical. Damage to the eyes starts immediately, so the quicker you get emergency first aid, the more you limit the amount of damage. That's why you need to know where the emergency eye wash stations are located. It is important to know where they are and how to use them. Once you locate the eye wash station, familiarize yourself with how it operates. Is it full and operating normally? Do you know how to work it? When was the last time it was inspected? Stations should be tested monthly to be sure they are correctly maintained and operating properly. Is the route to the station clear and unobstructed? Keep a clear, unobstructed path to the emergency eye wash. Remember that water does not neutralize contaminants. It merely dilutes them and flushes them away. If the nature of the contaminant is not known, flush for a longer time. A normal emergency station should provide a full, thorough flush for at least 15 minutes. Small bottles are not considered emergency eye wash stations. They are to be used while the person is being taken or traveling to the larger eye wash station. Know how to protect your eyes. Your vision is critical. Thanks for watching. During the servicing and maintenance of machines and equipment, the unexpected release of stored energy can result in serious injury or death to team members. Lockout Tagout is a safety protocol maintained by our company to protect team members from these hazards. All team members must be able to identify lockout tagout locks and tags if lockout tagout is being performed on your machine or line notify your supervisor do not try to restart equipment do not push the on button do not operate or use equipment never remove another team members lock or tags and never restart equipment with the lock or tag protecting storm drains is essential because unlike the water that goes down your drain to the sewer, water that flows into storm drains, is not treated, and filtered for pollutants. Storm drains, empty the polluted water directly into streams, and rivers with no treatment. Polluted water, degrades our nearby water sources. It is our responsibility, to regulate the contaminants that flow into the drains. 
Never allow or pour any liquids, such as oil, chemicals, or paints, into the storm water drain. If you puncture a tote or drum with a forklift, leave the forks in to minimize spills. Flip the drum or tote with the punctured area upwards to stop any spills. And immediately report all spills to your supervisor. Remember, storm drains are designated for rainwater only. Quiet Flex conducts yearly evacuation and shelter in place drills. Familiarize yourself with the facility evacuation plan and recognize the alarm signals. In the event of a fire emergency, you should walk to the closest exit and report to the emergency assembly area. In the event of a weather emergency, you should report to the nearest emergency shelter. Ask your supervisor for more information. During a drill or actual event, remember. Once alarm is sounded, all team members must go to the emergency assembly area. No one is allowed to leave the premises during a drill or actual event. Walk with urgency. Do not text and walk. Smoking is not allowed at the emergency assembly area. Do not re-enter the building for personal belongings. And, practice makes perfect. Take all drills seriously. ISO 14001 is an environmental management system standard that provides the organization with a structure to reduce its impact to the environment and assures compliance to regulations. Quiet Flex is proudly ISO 14001 certified. The essence of our environmental policy is COP, or COP. C stands for Continual Improvement. O stands for Obey the Laws and Regulations. N P stands for Protect the Environment. Our environmental slogan is Keep it clean, keep it green. We always keep our company facility clean and green. As a company, our environmental objectives are CPR. 1. Conserve resources. We evaluate the use of all materials to assess less and non hazardous alternatives. We also make a good effort to minimize waste generation. 2. Prevent pollution. Our company is firmly committed to the protection of the environment and prevention of pollution. And 3. Recycle. We make a good effort to recycle and reuse materials and properly dispose all the waste in accordance to state and federal regulations. At Quiet Flex, we take pride in maintaining a clean, clear, and bright workspace. In addition, good housekeeping practices promote a safe work environment. All team members should follow these housekeeping rules. 1. Dispose of trash properly. Do not leave your trash laying around for someone else to pick up. 2. Take initiative to keep your work area clean. Keeping items neat and orderly promotes efficiency. 3. A neat factory promotes a sense of quality that can be associated with the products. And 4. Maintaining a clean work area is everyone's responsibility. The use of personal phones distract many people. Personal cell phones are strictly prohibited on the manufacturing floor. This rule applies to all team members, including forklift operators. You can use your cell phones in the lunch rooms and oasis break areas. Anyone who violates the cell phone policy is subject to disciplinary action. In addition, prior to using a production radio, you must come to a complete stop. Heat stress can take different forms, from a simple heat rash to more serious form, a heat stroke. Many a times people confuse these disorders. But it is crucial for people to distinguish the differences. Identifying the correct type of illness helps them take proper steps to treat the symptoms. Heat rash typically occurs when sweat is trapped against the skin and cannot evaporate due to restrictive clothing. The parts of the body most commonly affected are the neck, upper chest, groin, and elbow creases. When the rash covers a large area, or if it becomes infected, it may become very uncomfortable. The signs and symptoms of heat rash include rash, characterized by small pink or red bumps, irritation, or prickly sensation, and itching. Heat cramps can occur during hard physical labor, 
in a hot environment. Cramps are caused when heavy sweating leads to improper levels of sodium and electrolytes in the body. The signs and symptoms of heat cramps include cramping or spasms of muscles. This may occur during or after the work. Heat syncope occurs when blood pools in the body's extremities, leaving the brain with little oxygen. It typically happens when a person tries to stand up from a sitting or lying position. This can be increased by exposure to excessive hot environment and dehydration. The signs and symptoms of heat syncope include brief loss of consciousness, sweaty skin, normal body temperature, and no signs of heat stroke or heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion occurs when the body's core temperature rises above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This is usually caused by a combination of high temperatures and dehydration from heavy sweating. A simple way to describe the appearance of a worker is three W's, wet, white, and weak. The signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion include excessive sweat, feeling weak or tired, possibly giddy, experiencing nausea, normal or slightly elevated body temperature, and pale or clammy skin. Heat stroke is the most dangerous heat-related medical condition, though not very common. It occurs when the body can no longer control its internal temperature. The body's temperature may rise to 104 degrees Fahrenheit or higher in a matter of minutes, causing a full medical emergency. Any person suffering heat stroke needs immediate emergency help. The signs and symptoms of heat stroke include mental confusion, delirium, fainting, or seizures, body temperature, probably 106 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, hot and dry skin, usually red or bluish in color, and lack of sweating. There are many reasons to work safely. Think safely, work safely, and go home to your family each day the same way you came to work, without an injury. Thank you, and welcome to Quiet Flex.